Good evening, Chumbas. Welcome to our first session of Cyberpunk Red. Our Cyberpunk Red uh, <laughs> actual play. Oh, God. Off to a good start. I am Simon at Wondering DM. Welcome, welcome tonight, everyone. And thank you, John John the Wises, for the subscription. Thank you so much. Um, hello, all the new faces. Hello, the recurring faces. Um, like I said, I'm Simon at Wondering DM. I will be GMing uh, this campaign of Cyberpunk Red. Um, this show, by the way, is sponsored by Artalsorians, the maker of Cyberpunk Red, of Cyberpunk 2020, of everything Cyberpunk, Mechton, Teenagers from Outer Space, and The Witcher. Um, we are playing with the Cyberpunk rules from the Jumpstart Kit that we've modified for the game um, so that the characters have a bit of room for growth and everything. Um, that said... Thank you so much, Calabretto. Um, that said, we um, are going to give away tonight two copies of the Cyberpunk Red Jumpstart PDF kit. Uh, one at break and one at the end of the stream. So stick around if you want to win one of these prizes. The winner will be chosen at random from everyone in chat. Thank you, thank you. Um, it is... Honestly, I am floored by um, the fact that Talsorian uh, sponsored me and everything. This is this was not expected in the slightest. So, what else do I have to say? Oh yes, sponsors. We also have another sponsor that sponsors all of our shows here on Wandering DM, and it is Mage Hand Press. Mage Hand Press is a company that makes supplement for D&D 5th edition. We play their Dark Matter D&D in space. Uh, game, campaign, thank you so much. Oh, gift subs, nice. Um, yeah, we play Dark Matter every Tuesday here. We've been on a three weeks hiatus uh, because of work, but uh, thank you, Walada. Uh, oh, thank you, John John, actually, for gifting to Walada. Um, yeah, so, uh, where was I going with this? We uh, play on Tuesday Dark Matter. And uh, they also make other supplements. They just released the Mimic Book of Mimics. And, uh, which is everything Mimic. And also the uh, hardcover of their campaign setting was announced tonight. Uh, it'll be available for pre-order uh, soon. And you can get your copy of, uh, thank you for the host, your copy of Dark Matter if you want to at PAX Unplug. Otherwise, without further ado, let's jump into the game as we are being overwhelmed by the amount of subs and gifts and everything, you all are amazing. The game tonight will center, the first part actually, will center around Trince, the tech. We will begin the game a few year, uh, actually a year before she moved in the apartment and we will begin in on a cold winter day in night city we are in 2044 the time of the red has passed still the sun glows reddish in the sky and uh, tensions are at an all-time high in night city about 20 some odd years ago, the Arasaka Towers were blew up, blown up, woof, by a pocket nuke that was detonated. No one knows exactly who did it or why. Uh, some say that it might be my cat, who almost ruined my coffee. Some say that it might be Militech um, that attacked Arasaka. Others say that Arasaka detonated the nuke to protect their database. All that to say, the city center of Night City was destroyed, and we are now, 20 some odd years later, into the rebuilding efforts. Things are still... shitty, for the most part. Life is hard, life is violent, and that's where we find Trins today, working in her late father's shop. Trins. Mm? 
Would you mind telling all of the viewers, what does your shop look like? Well, there are three bays. Well, there are technically were four, but the fourth bay they turned into the dino like 10 years ago now. Um, it's a little older. It used to be a gas station before things, you know, went boom. But um, so they took out the pumps and now there's just the overhang, um, gray and brick. And, you know, like my parents used to make, were like great about putting things together and fabulous about putting things everywhere. And I loved so much about it that I decided like, I had a friend who had some paints and some spray paints and some lights. And then when there are a couple murals on the wall of what like, sunset looks like and the what people said the city looked like before it doesn't look like that now don't think i've ever seen it look like that but it looks cool and there i figured out a way to string the leds through the mural itself so it can light up at various points and it reacts to the music that's playing so that it actually beat keeps tempo and rhythm cool get off no 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 no, no. this is my premiere I have to, I have to do stuff. Bye bye. You are thus working in your parents' um, shop. What are you working on today? Uh, it was a family car that somebody brought in and uh, and brought a bunch of. Uh, well, it probably isn't gonna run really well, but they brought the parts and they brought a double. T uh, turbo system and we figure if we fuel inject it correctly and we switch the timing system correctly we can get an additional uh 57 horsepower to the rear wheel which means it'll probably do 10 20 10 30. and as you're working on this car um you hear footsteps approaching I assume that the front of the shop is like this huge garage door. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, there are three garage doors. Three of them, yeah. Uh, and one of them happens to be open just to let air in and out. And you hear the soft footsteps of what can only be described as um, dress shoes. Nobody wears dress shoes in the shop. That's just like stupid. And, and she kind of like... Turn around? Close her head. There's a man wearing a um, complete white suit, white shirt, black tie, white um, vest with white pants, black leather uh, dress shoes. And um, he is holding a small suitcase and looking at his agent um, as he approaches the garage and he lifts his eyes up from the um, the agent for just a few moments and mumbles, you, um, uh, Katarina, uh, 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 Tinwell? Rostelli? Trins. You can call me Trins. Uh, Everybody calls me Trins. Rostelli. I didn't have the right name there. There, um, reason, you're, you're about to step in oil. You probably don't want to step in that. Oh, and he takes a step back, like jerks back and, and goes around the puddle. Uh, he approaches you and says, my, um, um, my name is in my notes. That's a good place for it to be. I mean, yes, my name is Bernard Payne. I am an inspector from uh, the Night City Department of Health and Safety. Uh, pleasure to meet you. And she kind of like takes her hand and reaches it out. It's even though she's wiped it off, it's probably still half covered in grease and oil. Mm -hmm. He um, takes a tissue from his pocket and he wraps his hand in it before extending it to you. It's nice to meet you. Yes, yes, it is. Um, your shop is due for uh, the now late annual inspection. Um, would you mind if I take a peek around while you can keep working on your things, whatever it is that you're I just doing? have to see an ID. I, you know, it's the shop rules. I can't let you behind the technically you're not supposed to be here. Like 
can we go like i can't you're you're not safe here you're, oh, you're not um, wearing gear for here so i can't let yeah, you be uh, here so if we can go inside absolutely. and she kind of like gestures to like the small office that's off mm -hmm. to the side and it's just like you, you invites him in <laughs> yeah he follows you into the um mm -hmm. into the office uh and the moment that he steps into you know a, a more clean a cleaner space than the garage uh he sets his suitcase down on the counter mm -hmm. opens it uh ruffles through papers and data pads and gets a uh, card out a magnetic key card and he holds it up in front of you and it says like department of health and safety uh night city bernard Payne, uh second level inspector with his picture though the face is slightly different he's bearded on the picture slightly more tanned uh but it is the same person yeah. she'll just kind of take it and then like bring it underneath and she's got an old um scanner that she's retrofitted to kind of just be like a flash photocopier because she built it basically and it just kind of scans it underneath the counter and then hands it back to him so that she has everything it's like nice to meet you you can nice. call me trends Miss Trends? Yeah. Um, I will take my card back now. Here, here, what's up? Sorry. Can I get you something? We got coffee. Let's begin with coffee then. Um, <laughs> and he, he taps a few things on his agent and says, most often the coffee machine is probably a uh, cradle for germs. So do you serve coffee to your clients? No, it's for me. <laughs> but you can have some. And oh. <laughs> she come she comes back behind and there's a old uh what was at one point a Bunsen burner that she built a uh, containment around. So it's like all in one piece and then she's got a um she took like an old probably even in antique at this point. Um stovetop espresso machine that she's welded and refit so that it's perpetually running and then it also just has a slight siphon that can build down and she just it kind of like a cross between a keurig and a espresso machine so she can get the automaticness of a keurig but the taste and better of an espresso machine she kind of like knocks it a couple times turns it on comes out with two perfect cups and turns around here you go i'm sorry you want i, I don't have a creamer but that's okay. I take my coffee black. All right. And he sips it loudly like... <sighs> now, could we go around your facility? I need to inspect for a few things. Uh, the first one is where are the fire extinguishers? Well, there's that one by that door, there's that one by that door, there's that one by that door, and I can't take you in the shop until you have, like, better shoes on. That's okay. I uh, will have to make do. Um, and he goes from, like, one fire extinguisher to the next, and he looks up at the tags. Uh, like, one of them is, like, almost due. The other ones are kind of okay. And he's like, that's, um, that is fine. Uh, what about a uh, fire hazard? Um... Do you have an emergency exit for both you and your clients? For the clients can't come in the shop, but I got an emergency exit from there. There's one, that one there. There's always the bay doors. And if you're in the front office, you know, there's the extra side door. Hmm. So multiple potential exits. Yeah. Do you have any combustible products? She shirt. kind of like half raises an eyebrow at that one and looks at the, well, it's a mechanic's shop. I mean, aside from oil and grease. And the welder and the... You'll have to excuse me, Miss Trins. I am oh. not well versed in. Uh... Okay, so if you see here, you see the big thing that's sitting over there. That's the industrial welder. That's how you're going to make sure that you can cut and refit the parts that are going to be 
built into the car because you know most things don't come the right size you got to fit it correctly and then that is your um uh the, the uh oh, sorry that that that's an extra oxygen system intake design so that you can uh make sure that the other cyber you know the cyber cars they have to have the different uh fuel systems so you have to make sure that you power clean them which means you have to propel extra air through them speaking of alternate fuels do you have any reserves of uh chew to not on hand all right. I'm just. I'm not a. Sure. Not a service station. I'm just. Yeah, it's just a you know mechanic. Just making sure. Like I said, I know nothing. And he notes a few things down on his agent as uh, you're talking, and then he says, "Could you? Um, I know my shoes are unfit for the." Uh, well, it's not about that. It's that the insurance company says that they're a hazard and you could slip and fall. I am willing to take that risk. Okay, cool. And then she just kind of reaches and like grabs a... Um, like a hard hat and is like, you might want to put that on. This way I can say that I he protected puts it on. you. Yeah, he puts it on. <laughs> and it's like, all right, so this is a shop. We got three bays, only two cars in right now because things have been, you know, doing pretty well. Uh, the fourth is the dyno. Um, don't run that except during off uh, required hours, which means not until after 9 a.m. or and not not before 9 a.m. and not after 7 p.m. Um, you know, there are a couple lifts. We got one here. We got one here. We got a, a, a basement well there. Um, And he notes a few things down and says, well, that will be all then. Thank Have a nice you. day. You too. And he uh, taps, uh, pats himself and uh, realizes he's out of tissue. So he'll just wave <laughs> slightly and uh, leave. That's weird. Most people like me. Yeah, who knows? And she'll just go back and, like, turn the music back up and go back to the engine of the car. Not even... It's a little weird, but probably not it anything she It was indeed with. probably the weirdest meeting you've had all day. Um, and it, it still bugs you, like, remains at the back of your mind for a few hours, even late into the, uh, the afternoon and the evening when you close shop and go back to your home right above um, the shop. You make yourself a meal, chill out for the evening. How does Trins relax? Um, she has a bunch of books that her parents left. Uh -huh. And um, she has been playing with her agent and the AI and her agent. So that, uh, well, her family has a thing for Shakespeare. It's a thing. So she likes to recreate the um plays with music that she kind of retrofits and she has the ai who um she's named benedict um and looks like alan rickman as hans gruber in uh die hard um project as the other characters in the scenes to kind of play off of and you have a wonderful evening playing with hans gruber And uh, go to sleep that night. And you are awakened in the middle of the night by a cough coming from you. And the smell of burning oil. She's up and out door. Like, she probably doesn't. She throws on, like, the extra um, overalls that are there. She's up and out. And she probably um, runs to the fire suppression system. The first thing doesn't even think about anything else. You rush through the switch to turn on the fire suppressor system. And as you press it, like a few drops of water come down. 
and nothing else. That's not supposed to be in that line. Um, Shit. You can see from the door leading to your apartment upstairs, you can mm -hmm. start to see smoke coming up from behind it. Um, she's going to reach under her, well, under the window and pick up Wrenchy because, you know, she may not need it in the shop, but it's a great friend to have when um, your dad helps you learn T-ball by giving you a comically large three and a half foot tall wrench, which mm -hmm. looks even taller against her own five foot nothing frame. And she picks it up and she's going to break the window with the wrench. All right. You um, are going to have to make a check. Okay. First roll of the game. Please, can you make a melee weapon? With the wrench? With the wrench. That's a 21. That's a whole lot. <laughs> you break the window with the wrench. Actually shatter not just the window, but also the metal bars that were uh, protecting the window from uh, damage from the exterior or anything. Um, that might be a little too loud. There we go. You break the window open, shatter the bars, and you can see outside through the glow of the fire coming from your garage across the street. Two people seem to be cheering at the fire. They're dressed in um, like t-shirts with leather jackets. They are clearly armed. They have a holster that is displayed on their hip and a gun strapped to their back. Um, one still has a burning bottle of something in their hand. Um, and uh, they throw it at your, uh, at like a concrete wall, basically, uh, on the side of your establishment. However, as they do so, and the flame goes by their face, you recognize the person as being the inspector from earlier today. What do you do? Well, she's gonna do two things. First thing she's gonna do is she's gonna grab her, she's gonna shout out to her agent because she's got it voice activated. Why do Why do you need to do things like touch it? Well, that makes no sense. <laughs> You're just slow if you need to do that. Hey Hans, can you call Uncle Al? Cause I think we might need some like help out here. Calling Uncle Al Power. Thank you. Hey, uh, Mr. Inspector, you look a little slow on the fast pitch. You might want to put a little more effort into it. You know, you get a little more arm on it. And uh, shout as you shout, the other guy uh, elbows the, inspec the inspector who looks up at you and uh, waves and yells out, Santino sends his regards. Tell Santino I know I still know where he gets his product and I can still burn it down. By the way. And she's just gonna lean out the window and pull Wrenchy with her. And um this may have been her shop and she grew up here. And she may not have lived her entire life above this shop. Actually, her parents had a house. But she's multiple times and throughout her life managed to climb out of this particular window at various levels no matter what's doing so she knows exactly where the pitch is and where the safe point is on everything because it's the window directly above what used to be the pumps mm -hmm. and she just runs out and she's gonna try and actually just land on him or run out across and land in the middle of the street I'm going to ask you for an athletics check. 
athletics. I can, uh, which, oh, there we go. 11, not as good. You managed to get out through the window, uh, but unfortunately slip at the last moment. <sighs> and while you do not end up where you wanted originally, uh, which was about the middle of the street by giving yourself a boost, mm -hmm. you fall flat on your ass on the sidewalk. As this happens, a car comes screeching around the corner and parks right between you and the two uh, punks. They climb aboard and the car takes off. With now, a, uh, she may not be able to get to him, but there are two things that, that Trins is inherently loves above all other things. Cars and tech. Mm -hmm. So she and she memorize the make, model, and license plate of that car as it goes by? Yes, you can note down uh, that this car is uh, called a Nocturna Turbo. It is a, um, from what you can see, it's um, a modified model um, that was probably, and that you would have to see the inside to make sure, but it's probably been cybered. The Nocturna is not, it's like a vintage sports car. So it runs on, it runs on Chew, just like every other car now. Uh, but it tends to try to keep the mechanical aspect of it as old-fashioned as possible. She's looking at that car. Does she recognize that car? You've worked on one such as that a couple of years ago for Santino. Um... It was to be a car that he was going to resell anyway. Any, from what excuse he gave you back then. Um, but uh, either he bought it back, kept it, or it just so happens that it's a same mark and model. I think, I mean, really, that's... I could have done better! And she's just going to try and, like, get up. The uh, phone picks up. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a bit swamped with work right now, Katarina. What is, what's happening? Um, do you know some guys with some extra fire extinguishers? Uh, firefighters? Yeah, that'd be that'd be nice. That'd be nice. Well, why didn't you call nine one one? Um, there were some people that were a little pissed at the time. Um, okay. Uh, are you are you safe? Are you are you somewhere safe? Define safe in this city, but it, I'm fine. I'm are, fine. Is anyone actively shooting at you? Not currently. All right, stay put. I'll send the firefighters over. Do you need a, a squad car? Anything? I most of the boys are very busy tonight. Some shit you know, going down. If they got a spare car, that'd be nice. I mean, I think. Nah, we're fine. Just the extra firefighters. That'd be that'd be good. And and let them know they might need the chemical suppressant. All right, we'll do. Somebody decided Molotovs are a nice look. And uh, he promptly hangs up. And it's this is Night City. It's gonna take a while for firefighters to show up. You are yeah. left by yourself on the street for a good 10 minutes before they arrive. Is there anything that you would like to do during that time? She's gonna try and open all the bay doors. Get more air in? Um, she wants to try and redirect the bay doors because it's a cro um, to try and put it so that she, well, sorry, not all the bay doors. She's gonna open one of the bay doors and have all the rest closed so that there's only one means of entry, but she can try and get the fire suppression in there. Because there are both. If the fire gets too far, things will blow up. So she doesn't want that, but she also wants to control the spread and speed of the fire. And like she deals with injection engines all the time, 
So she knows how you can modify a space and the amount of air in a space to direct the, f the flow of combustion, basically. Theoretically. Um, yeah, you open, theoretically. You open one of the doors, and it's it's not a blazing inferno inside. Okay. But the good. fire is caught pretty much everywhere. Um, yes. It's too hot for someone... Ah, here, I hear the sirens. Too hot for someone to just go in without protective equipment. That's for sure. Um, and uh, you notice that the... Um, the fire suppression system is just spewing uh, steam at this point. Clearly something happened to it. Yeah. Um, she's going to follow the line to the main. Because it shouldn't be even spewing steam. It should be all chemical suppressant yep. in the shop. So there, somebody did some serious fucked up shit and see if she can find a way to... F without going all the way in to find where the sabotage was, at least close enough, and then see if she can fix it quickly. Ish. You're gonna wander around the shop for a few minutes. By the time you find um, the pipe coming out, mm -hmm. and actually the sabotage was not done like right next to the garage. It's It was uh, further away from the uh, from the shop. But you do, as the firefighters come in and uh, get to their job, get to fighting the fire, you find uh, that someone sawed the pipe, the main, going in, and Sugar. instead plugged in just a, it looks like a propane tank of whatever might be inside. Um, but that's what your fire suppressant system has been pumping out of. Uh, she's gonna, she's gonna knock that off. Like just take Wrenchy and knock the propane tank away from everything. It doesn't take, it doesn't require a roll or anything. You can just easily separate the two. Um, and you notice that the other end of the pipe where it was sawed off is still like leaking. Uh, yeah. the chemical and it comes out of a vat that's nearby which covers like a few of the buildings in the block where you live Fergans. trying to kill not just me but everybody that's like Santino that's not cool Hans tell Santino that's not cool unfortunately Matsuda is not here to hear it um however you can see from where you're standing, a few yards away from your shop, you can see the flames coming out of the of the roof. The fire has finally gotten to your apartment. And uh, the firefighters are doing everything they can to contain it. Which seems like they're going to be successful, but the shop is going to be just, like, write it as a loss. Um, they haven't seen you yet since you stand a few yards away. Um, a few of the firefighters are canvassing the area, trying to find whoever was at the origin of the call. Probably that Powell told them that uh, someone called them or that you personally called them, but they don't seem to see you to notice you from where you are. Do you approach them, or do you yeah, just simply she's just run gonna, away? I mean, no, she's... <laughs> these are guys... I mean... You can't judge people by everybody else's bad things. You have to judge people by how nice, you know how they are. And she just likes making friends with everybody. So she's going to go up and say hi. Um, the, uh, the main firefighter... And of course, this being cyberpunk... They're not just dressed as firefighters like we would know them in our uh, period. Uh, their suit are reinforced to also absorb damage from bullets, from extreme heat. Uh, and they have uh, a few pieces of cyberware that can also help. The one who's talking to you at the moment has this intricate 
uh, or who's about to talk to you, uh, the woman has this intricate sort of like radio type thing hooked into her left cheek and all the way up to her ear, or her ear. In fact, most of the ear itself is now made of metal. That's cool. I like that. Uh, and she seems to be coordinating the team uh, by just speaking and looking to her left while she's talking. And the moment she sees you, her eyes dart back to you. Um, I'm uh, Lara Pullman. You. Uh, hey, Trinjastelli. Nice to meet you. I'm sorry for your loss. Uh, yeah. This. Um, I remember my uh, my pa used to bring his car here before. Well, thank you. We're trying to do good work. Did it work for him? Uh huh? Yeah, then, you know, we did good work for you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he never had anything to say about it afterward. Okay, uh, well, that's good. Yeah. So, uh, Al told me that, uh, that was caused by, like, intentionally sabotage or some like, people decided to throw molotovs. Yeah, some people decided to throw molotovs. What can you do? This is a shame. This this whole district used to be much cleaner than it is now. It's just going into the dumps. Yeah, the, the, they cut the lines to the fire suppression so but they put it to the main and the vat instead of just my shit so i'm kind of concerned about everybody else she looks to her left and says we're gonna need a few more cars and we're gonna need someone from maintenance asap there's I mean, been like, sabotage if... to the whole place yeah there's that i mean it's like no and she kind of looks at the shop and is like oh most of my gear is in there otherwise i would have totally fixed it for you but it's kind of on fire at the moment. Yeah, we're doing what we can, uh, but I don't think you'll be able to retrieve anything. I hope you didn't have anything that had too much of a sentimental value. Did... Oh, yeah, I am contractually obligated to ask you, are you insured? Yes. Okay. You will need to contact your insurance company as soon as you can and explain what's been happening. And then listen to them bullshit and bullshit and bullshit and... Yeah, I know. Yeah, chances are you're not going to see this place again for a few years, but hey, if you're lucky, you might be able to reclaim it at some point or have the insurance company pay for it. Eh, you know, the worst things lucky. have been said. Yeah, don't quote me on that, <laughs> please. Nah. Do you, um... And she looks at you the way someone would look at, like, a traumatized victim. Um, probably expecting you to break down at some point, like so many people have done before. And she says, uh, do you... Uh, do you need anything? Do you have a place to stay? Um, and she just kind of looks back at the building, which is probably still in flame. Probably going out, you know, but still flaming. And she's like, I'll figure it out. All right, well. I mean, if all the worst comes to worse, I'll, uh... I'll go crash with Uncle Al for, you know, 24 hours or so. All right. You seem like uh, you're the type of person that knows how to handle themselves. So. Yeah. I was born and raised in Night City. Uh, so was I. I don't think I'll ever see anything but. All right. I got to go back to the team. If you're all right, uh, you can come to the station and get our report. Or do you want me to send it to you uh, by email? Or uh... Oh, you can just send it. Um, and she kind of pulls her agent out and it's like, taps it twice. It's like, and there's the contact information. Thank you. We'll, um, we'll send you the report and the bill. Of course, of course. And, uh, okay, shut up, sirens. And she goes back to managing her team, leaving you on the side of the road with Ranchi, um, half covered in soot, 
Uh, they, uh, as you're looking, as you look at your uh, shop, you can see some of the firefighters coming out. Just like their equipment is just blackened by soot. And, um, and, uh, they seem to have contained most of the fire. Um, some of them bring out these, like, shards of metal out, and they seem, like, they, they gathered together close by, like, a trio of firefighters, and, uh, the one that's holding it gesticulates a lot, pointing at the remains and talking to his, um... What? What'd you find? What'd you find? No! Oh, oh. Your... Hi, sorry, Trins. He nice tries to, to hide them a bit, and uh, Trins, this your place? Yeah. Yeah, the um. You might want to call the cops. I already did that. I don't see any patrol car. Okay, so I didn't necessarily call the cops. Cops. Okay, fine. I'll call the cops. Cops. Hey, Benedict, can you call Uncle Al? Calling Al Powell again. Thank you. Um, he picks up right away. Trends, what's up? Uh, the fire guys said uh, you need to send a car. They found something, but they won't show it to me. Uh, all right, sending a car over. Actually, I'm almost done my shift. Do you mind waiting, and I'll be uh, I'll be around. Oh no, I'll be fine. Yeah, I'll wait for you. It's cool. Bye. The firefighter keeps uh, like trying to hide them from you, like it was. I don't know, like the remains of a loved an a beloved animal or something, and they want to avoid traumatizing you or something. Uh, just show it to me. Guarantee you, it's not gonna freak me out. Well, probably not the weirdest thing I've seen all day. Uh. All right, but don't touch it. We uh, uh cops I'm are not gonna touching need anything. To, yeah, they're gonna need to run stuff on it. We've seen these before. And what he holds in his hand is like a, like a small but torn open black fire extinguisher like device. It's burnt to a crisp. He says, uh, that's an incendiary. Yeah, they were throwing Molotovs. They also placed these inside. Oh, so they wanted it to really explode. Better Dick, make a note. We're going to get bitchy. Bitch. Um, sort of. I don't I'm, get bitchy, I'm not, but sort of. I'm not a cop in any way, but I just have to ask. Who hates you that much that they would go through such a length to blow up your place of work and the apartment I, of the person living above? I, you know, most people don't. They really like me. Huh. Well... I don't know, someone, uh, you must have pissed off one serious customer. Yeah, you know, I figure, I figure it's Night City. I must have done something to somebody, but they didn't tell me. By the way, it, she's just kind of looking at their gear going, do, do you get, can you modulate the, the, the flow on the suppression off of that? Or is it, is it fully wired or is it manual? And just kind of, She's entirely distracted by what they're wearing mm. and not paying it. it he paying begins attention. to explain, probably as a means to keep you busy uh, and not like focusing on the fire or the loss or anything. But he basically goes into a long tirade explaining how uh, the suit reacts to environmental heat or temperature, I should say. And the warmer it gets, the hotter it gets, the stronger the blast from the suppressants. He actually has a... Um, so you know how the Mentis blades mm -hmm. are made so that you can have like a blade coming out of your forearm? He actually has a small reservoir of high powered, um, what the hell is that thing that's in fire extinguishers? Um, chemical suppressant. Yeah, the chemical suppressant. It's a small reservoir, but it's enough to like carve a path out of a burning building if need be to save himself. I bet I could make it better. Oh, it's made off of a design from a flamethrower. Dude, I could totally make it better. I'm, I'm I could make it go to 11. 
it's I, I, I like my arm the way it is, uh, miss, but thank you for the offer. It's uh Oh, never sorry, sorry, sorry. Professional problems. Ne next time, you know, anything you want, I'll I'll come stop by. I'll... And he looks at the other two like nobody offers help in Night City. Like who the hell? And they just look at each other like a bit confused. And that's when the lights the blue and red lights from a squad car are seen uh, a few meters away from you and come speeding Sergeant Al Powell in a squad car. He breaks and drifts halfway through the street, gets, off the, gets out of the car in a hurry, uh, trying as best he can to hold up his belly um, and to, to not look like an out-of-shape older uncle. Um, and looks around really quickly, sees you, and comes rushing at you. For those of you wondering, yes, yes. it is this Sergeant Al Powell. We decided that for this game, Al is actually uh, played by the same actor who played Al Powell in the original Die Hard. So picture... An African American with the big mustache, short hair, and uh, a police uniform. Yeah, he doesn't and have Twinkies. Twinkies at the moment, but he uh, rushes up to you, looks at you, uh, and holds your face in in his hands. And he looks looks you left and right, and he's like, "Are you are you all right? Did, oh yeah, uh, I'm smoke fine. inhalation? Did you did no, you breathe no, anything? I'm fine. Did you... No. Well, you know, more than no more than usual. Uh, okay, so why did you? Uh, because they said that thing, they tried to actually blow it up, which is kind of shitty. Someone tried to blow up your shop? Yeah! It's really kind of nasty. I don't like that. I... Okay, wait, let's... <sighs> breathe, From breathe. the beginning, but... he gets his uh, agent out, and he's like, <clears throat> record... All right, can you tell me what, oh, uh, victim name, victim name is, um, Katarina, Katarina Trins Rastelli. Rastelli. Uh, that was Simon not being yeah, no. able to get the name right, uh, r quickly enough. Katarina Trins Rastelli of the, uh, and he lists, like, the address of your apartment. We, um... A call has been placed tonight at um, 2345 uh, regarding a fire that had begun in the... Uh, where did it begin? And she kind of looks at the fire guys. Like, I don't know. Did it begin in the shop or was it them throwing the Molotovs at the door? And they start explaining that the fire started from the incendiary devices. Three of them were put in your shop. One near the office one in the center of the garage and another one near uh, some of the canisters of like used oil and grease that needs to be, you know, that you need to get like out and throw away uh, at yeah. some point. Um, that that environmental concern, re recycling, that mm -hmm. you have to cleanse it and everything before you can do anything with it, yeah. Um, and then they say that traces of accelerant were found uh, elsewhere in the garage and they explain like everything firefighter speech basically uh, and then he turns back to you and says all right who did this to you who's the fucker who do i have to punch because i'm not going to arrest this guy like it's just they're gonna find him in pieces in the pacific well, I know that there was some guy that came to do an inspection. I have his, I scanned his information uh, and she pulls up the agent again and just kind of taps it and beams it to him. And that's the fast code he tried to, he used to get in. But so he may have been one of the guys that was here throwing the Molotov and he may have said that Santino said hi, which is really kind of shitty because like, I don't think Santino would have actually burned the place down. We're talking about Santino Matsuda. Car thief? Yeah. 
I can so, neither confirm nor deny that statement. I don't know, so I can't tell you. Come on, Trent. It's been a few years. You don't have to protect the guy anymore. Okay, fine. Yes. He may have stolen vehicles. Yeah. All right. Known car thief, Santino Matsuda. So he would have sent people. I can tell you the car that they drove away in. Oh, that would help. Nocturno Turbo, blue, slight chrome, little LDDs underneath, probably retrofitted with a cyber um, drive system. Not as good as what I could do. Definitely not. Eh, did a, had a little bit of a hitch on the 0 to 60. Didn't get, pull the top end correct, but probably did okay. And then she'll rattle off the, the license plate number. Probably stolen. No, we're going to have to look this up, but it probably is stolen. Well, at least the license plate. Uh, all right, and he sent people. Why would he? He doesn't do an arson. That's. I'm going to have to run that by the boys at the station. He... Mm, mm, mm. He what? Wasn't happy when I said he couldn't come back? A lover's pat, really? When I said that he couldn't bring his shit cars here because I wasn't gonna let him... I wasn't gonna go to jail for him? All right, vendetta against the ex for and professional and personal reasons. Possibly swung Renshi at his head. Let's just say you did not confess to assaulting someone. I didn't hit him. I just swung it at him. To get him to leave because I was concerned for my safety. All right. I'll omit this. Look, do you have a place to go? For tonight, at least. Um, I can find something, I'm sure. It'll be great. Are you sure? I have a couch. I have a pull-out bed. I, you know, the couch would not be a bad thing. I might take the couch. Good. Hop on in the car. Cool. Do, do you think they will let me, like... Never mind. I'll ask you later. All right. And he takes one last look at the at the remains of the shop and just shake his head, going, waste. And brings you to his place, a derelict apartment. Um, its walls are perpetually stained yellow from years of people smoking inside. Um, plaster peels off the walls. You open the door to just go into the, the stairwell that goes up. Because the, the place doesn't even have an elevator. As you open the door, you actually drag a cockroach along with like the door. It's okay, big no, enough see, that it doesn't fit under. Like, no, that doesn't. That's not how it works. Obviously, this one is dead. Al, Uncle Al, don't you have like a broom? This one's dead. And it just otherwise it would have. Okay, then you have serious problems if you couldn't get underneath the thing. Ugh. You're not flying, right? You're good. Okay. He looks at you and he's like, "Look, policeman salary. It's all I can mm -hmm. afford." Totally not commenting. I'm just saying, if you had a broom, I would have fixed it. But. You are going to let me fix your hot water heater now, right? Oh, uh, knock yourself out. It's in the basement. Um, careful, the super might be down there. He's <sighs> drugged out of his mind, really, most of the time. I don't know that I don't need to touch his stuff. I just need to touch your and she's just going to go over to like where the furnace is for the unit for the mechanical for the unit. He goes up like... to his apartment during that time yeah and it's just like <laughs> and she's just gonna fix the water heater for the whole building so it actually works but the it doesn't register as the on the gas meter that the hot water is working 
Make a basic tech check. I'll say DC 20 for that. Oh, it's a 19. Do you want to burn a point of luck? Sure. They come back sure. every game. Just letting yes, you know. Yes, they do. She, yes, she will burn a point of luck. All right. Normally, luck can be burnt, like, spent before a roll, but uh, in my games, just like in The Witcher, I allow it so that we can uh, spend it after the fact. Um, yeah, that was just like a crap roll. You begin working on uh, the heater and everything and doing your things, and as you're working, probably singing to yourself or something, mm -hmm. uh, you hear a voice behind you go, Grr. I have a very big wrench and I'm currently trying to fix something that's going to, that it's attached to a fire system. Do you really want me to miss? I have a big wrench in my pants. And as you turn around, there's this greasy old fella, roughly 70 years old, missing a shirt. His, uh, tattoos that he had are mostly faded uh, he has a gigantic heart implant like cyberware like a cyber defibrillator mm -hmm. but one of the older models like those that the economy ones like the one that doesn't look sleek and uh that is just bulky and uh shitty um and it, it's beeping and flashing. Um, he also has a, uh, a cyber hand that is missing two fingers. And it's with that hand that he holds a cigarette. Or actually, I should say, uh, a vapor. Because it's just that more douchey. Uh, he's wearing pajama pants. Nothing in his feet. And he's sort of leaning against the exit door eyes um glassy and foggy and says so we don't really have a lot in the ways of ladies here i uh couldn't Not a help lady, but i'm a mechanic yeah i'm pretty sure you're naked under your overalls Probably not, and not gonna deal with you. And by the way, if you don't back up like 15 feet in the next 30 seconds, that defibrillator is gonna turn itself off. Ha! <laughs> I. Look at you. I fought in the third corporate war. You really think that I don't have. <laughs> boosted reflexes. Listen. Well, it's not about your reflex. It's about the fact that I could probably send a virus from here to there in about 20 seconds. There's probably no uh, firewall protection on that model. You have three frayed wires that I can see from here, and I've got a welding torch in my hand. Make an intimidation check. <laughs> Trying to remember it. Intimidation? Uh, I think it's, uh, it's a per persuasion, I think. Yeah, persuasion. Or I should have done a face-off instead. That would have helped. But whatever. Next time. Persuasion. Okay. There. Oh, there we are. Sorry. It's like under the human perception. Couldn't see it for a second. Oh, critical failure. Never mind. He looks at you and scoff and is like, yeah. You can talk whatever you want. I'm just... I'm saying you want a good time. I live in apartment one. And, uh, I like them greasy. And he turns I'll around let... laughing. And she's gonna go, apartment one, huh? Good to know. And then find the line from the water heater that goes directly to apartment one and cut it off so it never gets hot water. It's easy enough to just go through all the pipes and just notice, like, which one's number one and cut it off. That done. Yeah. She'll go up to Alice's apartment. She's probably been there before. 
Oh, yeah, probably for, like, dinner or lunch or something or just hanging out. His apartment is a uh, one and a half. There's one room where he has both his couch, a few dinner tables, like, you know, the folding tables, <laughs> uh, a TV, um, just a lone light bulb stuck to the ceiling, uh, and a small kitchen area. Um, give me a second, I'm going to answer someone in chat because it's a bit too long to type it out. Uh, but yes, Behewit, you do not have to be subscribed to, to watch the charity stream on Sunday. You just need to tune in. Um, his bedroom is part of that one and a half. It's just a cot. Uh, and he doesn't really sleep in it. He basically sleeps on the couch and leaves all of his clothes on the um, the cot. And as you come in, uh, he's put on uh, tonight's episode of uh, Combat Cab, and he's like, "I can I can reheat a few." Uh... No, I'm good. I've eaten. I s was mostly sleeping. I did everything. I'm fine. Don't worry, Uncle Al. It's fine. All right. I'll um. He goes to his cot and just shoves all the clothes down on the floor. And, uh, ooh, thank you for all the gift subs. Or, yes, thank you for all the gift subs, actually, Godless Lawyer. Um, he says, uh, you can turn off the TV if you don't want it to. Uh, uh, I'm going to crash soon. It's just I like to have the TV on because it, uh, it helps drive the worst tenants of the place away uh if everything is silent they tend to try to open the door so. you know what uncle al i can totally fix that for you i can refit the lock you know kid you can do a whole lot but you have to start charging for stuff you can't just go around doing stuff for free i mean i'm gonna let you crash in for free because well, I knew your parents. I know you. You're a pretty good kid, but if you keep going like that, Night City's gonna chew you and spit you out. Probably in pieces. Yeah, well, probably not. You can't get too bogged down in the bad stuff, Uncle Al. <laughs> you don't see what I see every day. Nope, I see a lot of other stuff. Yeah. I mean, you get too bogged down in things and then you end up like Mark in jail for 5 to 10. Yeah, but Merc was one thing. You were like the opposite end of the spectrum. That's entirely true. I'm the better kid. Yeah, but it's a spectrum. You could veer. A little bit to the Merc side. That would probably make sure that you live a long and healthy life. Yeah. I, uh... Hmm. Let me get back to you tomorrow, but I think I have a place for you. Like, if you want it. Like, aside from crashing here. Just so no, something would, popped in I, my mind. Uh, I, I'd take that. I'd take that. Yeah. I'll have to check back with the boys, though, so don't hold your breath, kid. Yeah. Did you want me to come do those turbos tomorrow or the next day? Uh, and he sits down on his cot and says, you know what, actually, um... Could you come in and help fix the uh, automated battering ram? You're going to let me play with it? You're going to have to get some gunk off of it first. What did they drive it through? No, well, they didn't. Huang and Max Tech was, uh, I don't know what happened. I just, I overheard it today. Um... Something went off. The battering ram wasn't placed the right way or something. They tried to open a door, bust through it. It busted through Huang instead. 
That sucks, man. Yeah, see? So when you say so like something off, you meant someone. Pieces of someone, yeah. Yes, I can do that. But that would be appreciated, and during that time, well, I'll, um... I'll check up that place I might have for you, and, uh... Who knows, maybe the boys will have something, uh... Something for you to do. I mean... You know how they always enjoy you playing with their toys, so... But you're gonna let me play with the batting ram so I can have... You know, I'm sorry about Juan, and I'm really bad about that, and hopefully things get better. But I probably can fix it so that doesn't happen ever again. And then I also figured out a way to add a secondary level of a small, very, very tiny propane system to it. They could add an extra just small spark. That means that in addition to the full force of the battering ram, you have a little bit of fire that's coming out of it to help cut through as like a laser scalpel gun, you know, as a, as a kind of like a pinpoint scalpel kind of thing. So you can. We don't have the funds to get all those like material that you're talking about. You already have them. Yeah, but we already use them for other things. No, no, this is all this like the trash shit that you keep saying you're gonna throw away, and I'm like, no, that's actually good shit. <sighs> Look at it this way. Give me, give me, just say that I can do it, and I promise it will not cost you anything more than the original bill that she was gonna pay me anyways. See, I can take money for shit, and. I guarantee you that it'll work better and you'll be even more intimidating and you're not gonna have to scrape anybody off of it ever again. Hopefully we well, won't. Well, anybody that works for us that's on the right side of the battering ram at the time. Yeah. Ah, oh, poor guy. Yeah, that's gonna suck. Trauma team flew him to the hospital. It's, oh. uh... Yeah, that was a thing. Anyway, all right, kid. All right. I'm going to go to bed. You, um, see you in the morning. Yep. There's, uh, uh, breakfast kibbles. Yeah, I'm good. All right. But thank you. And to sleep you go for the rest yep. of the night. You dream of smoke and fire and sometimes awaken to the thought of... Like something being on fire around you, but there's just you, a snoring Al Powell, and the endless reruns of Combat Cabs season twelve on uh, on the TV. The next morning comes. You are brought to the station with, um. Sergeant Powell. He drives you there. And you spend a good amount of time working on the battering ram. Uh, from what you can see, whatever it struck on Huang, mm -hmm. it actually took out most of a cyber implant than like flesh and bones. Yeah, we are. So maybe not so bad, um, but some of these pieces were like Kevlar. She's gonna pocket, you know, she's gonna take a couple of those pieces, you know. That used to be inside Huang's chest. Waste not, want not. Okay. Um, you, I'm not gonna ask you to roll uh, for that. You can easily uh, tweak it and add your little firepower. It's like the Mythbusters going at it with like one of their inventions. Um, and during that time, some of the uh, NCPD uh, officers will come by. Say hi, offer condolences. Um, a few of them bring you uh, synthetic donuts. Um, it's eh, better than nothing. It's not real food, but it does the job. And um, a few of them will bring in like their rifles or their pistols. Uh, like, oh, this one, like, jammed two days ago. I haven't had time to repair it. And you notice that some of the officers really have, like, a laissez-faire towards their, their equipment. There is no real 
like discipline and respect for the uniform or what have you they're mostly just you know city paid mm-hmm. thugs um which... you know if you didn't shoot your gun like that i could guarantee i could get you an extra five uh five rounds a minute out of it or five rounds a second excuse me do it just do it and- She's gonna break it apart and rebuild the pr- propulsion and add and file down the barrel. It's like the NCPD needs all the help it can get. Uh, they are overworked, overwhelmed, and things are just going downhill for them. Anything that helps them kill the bad guys faster is very much welcome. Um, Over the course of the day, you overhear some of them speak about the possibility of getting a few spider drones in the future. I can can make those better. I've seen the schematics. I haven't actually seen one in person yet. Somebody gave me the schematics. They haven't received them. It's all rumors and hush-hush. But apparently, one of the... uh, higher ups has a few contacts with IEC a cybernetics company and uh they have like they resell a few of those drones for cheap so to and she's like can can you get it can i see it i want to i want to see it 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 like the group of people that were uh talking like in the cafeteria for example uh they look back at you as you're like all giddy and they're like sure well give you a call if 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 it happens we're not you know, holding out hope no i bet you if somebody got me like actual detailed schematics instead of just the ones that are available <clears throat> for public consumption i could build one and she just kind of like <laughs> sulkily moves away al comes find you uh roughly a about like noon ish like around lunchtime mm-hmm. uh and uh he's holding his agent up and says i got it i got the place cool so um it just so happens that uh i it's something i dispatched uh a couple of days ago and uh, I wasn't sure about the details because there's just so many things at once going on. But uh, I dispatched a couple cars uh, to that place for a domestic dispute. And when the boys arrived, uh, both the tenants were dead. They killed each other. Eh, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, but the place has been scrubbed clean by CSI. Oh, they've already been there? I. Yeah, um, the place yeah. is just... It, it's... Hey, up for I'll take rent it. if you want to. Uh, it's just, there's just this one thing. Um, somewhat close to the combat zone. I don't like sending you there. Uncle Al, this is me. Do you really think the combat zone is going to be scary to me? Shouldn't they be scared of me? <laughs> he ruffles your hair and he's like, everybody should be scared of you. But in all seriousness, if Santino, fine. if Santino managed to try to blow up your place that close to the combat zone, who knows what kind of freak he can get, freaks he can get out of the streets to just storm the place out or something. Then I'll just be quiet about where I am. It'll be fine. <sighs> if you say so, kid, I just, I don't want to have your death on my conscience. You're not going to have my death on your conscience. All right. Here's the address. It's 2077 Pond Smith Avenue. Cool. It's a eight floor building. Uh, it's got already a few tenants in. Half of it is empty. I'm sure you can probably negotiate something if you don't want the murder apartment, but that's up to you. No, I figure I can get a better deal on the murder apartment. Plus, it's probably closer to the exit. I really don't know. The I mean, guys, the guys went in, and all I heard over the radio was someone puking. 
that just seems like poor. I, you know, you got to get better guys, Uncle Al. Did you see the the um, that one? The the tall person with the like. I like the lights. The lights are cool, and the the extra radio system is cool. But they kept bending the barrel. You can't bend the barrel. It's not going to shoot straight. I just dispatch them. I don't train them. I don't tell them how, tell them how to do their job. I'm just the lowly dispatcher. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, if you need anything, you let me know. Yeah, I'll be fine. Don't worry, Uncle Al. It's all good. All right. By the way, I fixed the battering ram. Let me guess. You did add, find, found a way to add your torch thing to it. Yeah, see, now it'll actually add an extra heat system so that when you get to those extra reinforced, you know, the bigger problem with, you know, Kelvlar reinforcement is that it's got a shock suppression. So it's going to distribute force across the various systems. So now you add the extra heat and that disrupts the, the force system and then it'll actually go through even faster. All right, then. I just hope that God, and I just I hope it doesn't miss fire again. And I, just I managed to make sure someone. that I managed to make sure that it won't miss fire unless somebody's an asshole. And he looks around to like what few other officers are still in the bullpen, and he leans down to you and he says, "The question is, who among them aren't assholes?" I'm sure they're fine, Uncle Al. You just need to like like people better. Standing citizens, all of them. Yeah, they're cool. All right, kid. I like them. I'm gonna have to go back. My 15-minute uh, break is over, and that's all the time I had to eat today. So, guess who's going uh, without a lunch again? Guess who may have left you something on your desk? Good. I was feeling up for a few synthetic donuts. Yeah, there were a lot of those. We get them for cheap. There were a lot of those. So, you watch yourself, kid. You need anything, you call me. Do you Will need do, me Uncle to Al. call a cab for you, or you're good? No, I'm good. All right, then. I'll be Why seeing you. I get in a cab? <laughs> she just kind of has this moment of like, I wouldn't get into a car I haven't, like, I'm not getting into a car I haven't touched or rebuilt or refit in some manner ever <laughs> and it's like by this point she's probably she's probably rebuilt the engines on 90 percent of the squad cars in this place at this point you probably had a hand in like either boosting repairing or modifying the squad cars or yeah. whatever cars still haven't been blown up mm -hmm. and that happened a year ago before, or actually the last time that you lived above the apartment, those last fateful two days, Sentino Mitsuda has not made himself known to you over the course of that year. You haven't seen him again. You, he hasn't sent thugs to you, probably due to the fact that he doesn't know where you moved. There was an APB for a time out for Mitsuda and uh, the two thugs. The one that presented himself as the inspector was unfortunately killed by an NCPD squad car. Um, the car had a malfunction. Apparently the brakes didn't work. And uh, in during a regular, regular traffic stop, they ended up running him over. Um, oops. The other thug has never been found. And neither has Mitsuda. But who knows? We might see him again. And that, Chumba's, was the intro session for Katarina Restelli. Before we head on to break and we switch over to our other player, um, other character, Reno, 
I am giving away, uh, courtesy of our Talsorian Games, a Cyberpunk Red Jumpstart PDF kit. I will choose someone in chat at random amongst all the chatters. But in order to make sure that the command works per uh, perfectly, anyone who wants to join in the giveaway, please type in something in chat right now. It can be anything, so long as you're not, you know, messing around. Um, but that way, uh, because the command basically uh, goes through like recent chats, it should go through all the viewers. But I just want to make sure since it is the first time I'm going to use it. Uh, so let's just, you know what? In chat, type Chumbas. Like this. C-H-O-O-M-B-A-S. If you want in, type Chumbas. I'll give you a bit of time, and uh, after the break, when we come back, we'll decide who the winner is. See you later, everyone.
Hello, everyone. This was a messed up transition. <laughs> uh, let me fix the cameras. Um, having it works. Yeah, it does, but they're a, it's a little bit too tiny, and I don't like that. I like them to fit the frame, but the frame was invisible during the break. That's always something that happens. But you know what? Pro streamer. So. Thank you all for waiting. Welcome back. We are about to pick a winner. For the uh, Cyberpunk Red Jumpstart Guide. The first one we are giving away tonight. And the winner is... And the winner is... Winner is... I don't know, it's taken a while, apparently. Come on, Nightbot, you can do it. Come on, Nightbot. Second, it's time. It is taking a whole lot of time. <laughs> it's really slow. Uh, Nightbot. Nightbot. Nightbot doesn't want to help? All right, fine. Mm -hmm. We're going to do it the old-fashioned way. Old-fashioned way. Cool. I actually have 20 people in chat right now. 20 people who um, had uh, spoken in chat. So, um, and all the viewers. So let's try this out. We'll take number 19. And number 19 is probably a bot, actually. <laughs> um... Let me check to make sure. Yes, Windsock. I don't think that Windsock... Windsock, if you are a person and have actually been watching my stream from the very beginning, um, please make yourself known in chat. We'll wait a minute or two. Um, otherwise, we'll pick someone else. <laughs> yep, that's basically it. <laughs> All right, then. I don't have time to wait. Number 12. Number 12 on the list is Orate God. I hope I pronounced it properly. Orate God. Oh wow, he was right. The winner is Orate God. The win yeah, you actually he wow. Said it. He are said you it. an oracle? Um <laughs> Can you send me a private message, Orate God, with your email address? And um we will coordinate with Talsorian to send you uh the uh, free your free copy of the uh, jumpstart rules for Cyberpunk Red. That said, let's go back into the game and we'll draw another one at the end uh, of the night. So we'll go back to a year before what we did with Trins. We are in 2043 and we are with Reno. Reno, you've been working for a company called IEC for a while. And um, they've been very generous with your cyberware. They've been helping uh, tweak you up and also make you stronger, faster, more resilient than a regular human, so long as you 
remain on the payroll. Which you've had for a while. And in fact, for the purposes of this intro session, I will say, twice during our game tonight, you can choose to add a d6 to any skill roll that you make. This is to simulate your cybered up body gotcha. that you had in that time. Um, however, IEC hasn't contacted you for about a month now. No jobs, no nothing. And it happens from time to time. You have like quiet times, <laughs> periods where they don't necessarily need a solo to take care of their business. What has Reno been up to during that month? What do you do in your downtime? Oh, sleeping around. Um, I like to go out to the nightclubs sometimes. Um, drinking a bit. Uh, I don't have my cat yet. And I'm not quite as lonely and as loving the solitude as I as I do now in the current time. So in the past, um, out with friends, I don't have very many, but got a few, got a few more than friends. So spending time being social. All right. You've uh, also had a coworker, uh, well, coworker, another solo, another agent that IEC would deal with that you've worked with sometimes too, um, though you haven't seen him in that month, probably because he was getting all the job and there was nothing left for you. He goes by the code name of Wrecker. Yeah, he's a bitch. And um, one day as you are hung over like hell after a night of partying, your agent rings. I finally thought you'd have died. Reno? Yes. This is Mr. Strauss speaking. We would have use of your services. Well, I assume, since that's why you're calling. What's the job? Mm, a bit too delicate to discuss it over the phone. Would you be amenable to meet me in my office at the IEC Tower in uh, downtown Night City? Say, in an hour's time. This is a very sensitive and time-sensitive uh, time matter. It's fine. It's paying well, I guess. I think you will appreciate the payment <laughs> for what you have to do. I always do. Click. Gather my things, my bag, I head out. You make your way to the IEC tower. Well, they call it a tower. It's like 12 stories high. It's not... Like, it's nothing like the Arasaka Towers of old or the giant arcologies that you can find uh, in the world. Um, but it still is a sizable building, especially after the destruction of City Center. And uh, it, ha it is connected to a factory. Um, Small-scale factory, but still, where you know that this is where they normally test out their new products. IEC being a cyberware company, mostly. Uh, so they tend to release product after testing, which they do on, well, on site at their uh, headquarters. You make your way to Mr. Strauss's office. You would know Mr. Strauss, you have worked with him before. He is the head of operations at IEC. Um, a German blonde man, um, probably in his 50s. Actually, how long have you been working for IEC? I'd say about mm, four and a half years. Okay, so he was already there when you uh, when you were hired, and he doesn't seem to have aged a bit. You do know that both of his eyes are cyberware. 
and uh, he actually had them um, tweaked so that instead of looking like perfectly natural eyes, uh, they are steel colored where the white should be and the iris is like a soft, it glows a soft blue light. So he looks like he constantly has some sort of weird glasses on his face. Um, part of his head is shaved, where he has an implant that goes here and connects to the back of his head. Uh, you don't know what he uses for, uses it for, uh, but sometimes you have seen this cable come out of the back of his head and plug into his desk. Right, I'm here now. What's the job? Straight to the point, then. Well, the job is, uh... We have a defector. Or should I say a traitor in our midst. That's new. Pays well enough, surprise. Hmm. Yes, and we are generous with our benefits package. But, uh, well, you know how people are. Greedy, ambitious, always whining about what they cannot have instead of being content with what IEC provides. Except that this one stole a lot of our early prototypes for things that we are about to uh, go into production with. These prototypes would be worth quite the fortune on the black market. Even other companies like Militech, if they were to get their grubby little fingers on these plans, uh, they could go a long way into rebuilding their reputation. Something that we do not want to have happen. Hmm. Was it one of us? Can I ask? It's I mean, Riker. My desk jockeys. Oh. <laughs> Can I say I'm not surprised? Well, I thought the strong silent type also meant loyal and obedient, but it seems that the uh, loud mouthed rebel is actually the loyal soldier I needed. Well. Suits himself. He was never very good at his job anyway, so I'm happy to take care of it. We would need for you to do two things. Retrieve whatever it is he stole. We believe that everything is uh, was saved to a drive. We you don't believe... even know what he took. Uh, I am not at the liberty to discuss what he took with you, and I would appreciate if you did not thumb through the files either. This could mean... Uh, this could have dire consequences for you. Do you remember the... Um, data jack that we installed in Wrecker's head? Yeah, he said he aged for weeks. Um, we believe that that's where he hid all the data, which means that retrieving it will, of course, terminate Mr. Wrecker's life. Oh, woe is me. And that's our second thing. Our secondary, your secondary objective, if you will. Make sure no one finds his body afterward. It's gonna cost you, depending on where he's at. Hmm. He types a few things on, like, the office sort of laptop, cyber laptop he has. Uh, and your agent pings. And you see 60,000 euro bucks. They are not delivered to your account yet. But the transaction is pending. 
Is that serious, huh? Wow. I can give you 10% in advance for whatever expenses you might need. And the rest upon delivery of the plans, which will net IEC much more than 60,000 euro bucks in the long run. Yeah. Let's call it a safe investment. 20. Can you roll reputation? Yes, I can. <laughs> Reputation, reputation. Um, I think it's a face, a uh, face-off, that it's called. Give me a sec. I'll get the reference sheet out. It's uh, under. I can't actually click it. Um, face down. Can you click on face down under, um, in the actions tab of your character sheet? Oh, gotcha. Okay. <laughs> Oh boy! Starting off with the bang, baby. Um, he tenses his finger, fingers um, close to his face like this, and looks at you and says, "You've been reliable and very loyal." I'm sensitive, after all. All right. Twenty thousand, it is. And he sends it to you. You notice that the payment that's like in transit goes down from 60 to 40, but your account just increases by 20,000 euro bucks. Oh, I felt that. <laughs> well, any leads and at least where he is. We believe that he's hunkered down somewhere in Night City. Our contacts haven't established any uh, sightings of him leaving the city. So that's at least that. Um, he had a tracking device on him. The same one you have. We've tracked him to his house. But that's when he took it out. Or at least deactiv had it deactivated. You could always begin your search there. Uh, that seems like the logical site. Uh, fine. Deal. I'm your girl. I know you would. Be careful, Wrecker is still armed to the teeth. Naturally. His sense of self-preservation is uh, not as good as his aim, though. He was pretty much like our own little angry rhinoceros. Well, consider it, consider it done. Good. Come back here when you have the data, and not before. Ta-ta. And you exit the uh, the office. You have been to Wrecker's place before he's hosted mixers and soirees that weren't really super popular. Uh, he's not a very social individual, but he tried to be. Probably to mimic your outgoing personality and style. Um, Wrecker, you would know, is a... Well, how, how old would uh, Reno be two years before the game starts? Uh, she is, she's my age, she's 29, so she'd be 27. 27, okay. Mm -hmm. So he's younger than you. Uh, mm -hmm. He is 24. And um, while young, he is jacked up with cyberware. Uh, he, his, and you would know that his favorite method of killing was to bludgeon people to death. Uh, which he would do with the um, special knuckle implants the knuckle the, the big knucks mm. that he was so fond of he's also uh he's also equipped with cyber arms from what you know and uh probably has like subdermal plating and other stuff that he's probably never boasted about that he has um 
having been to his place before, it's it wouldn't be hard for you to go back there. And you know that Riker lived by himself. <laughs> Once you're out of the IEC Tower, where do you want to go? What do you want to do? Uh, so um, I've got quite a bit of pocket change. Um, I'm going to go to my dealer, essentially, my arms dealer, and uh, pick up what I need. Who is your arms dealer? Uh, his name's Nightjack. Nightjack. Works out of a car. I automatically picture the arms dealer from Vampire Bloodlines. <laughs> um, you uh, get to his... And actually his car changes... His, I should say a van. It's mostly a van at this point. Uh, changes location each time. Basically every time you go to buy from him, he tells you where he will be. Like where to find him. Uh next week he moves every week from one location to the next uh and this time actually you can find him on the outskirts of the combat zone he is parked across the way from a bar slash dance club called the forlorn hope that's a bit of an unusual spot Kind of busy, but Shit it works that way. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, what can I do for you, Reno? What are you looking for? I need something big, nasty from a distance. A little punk needs squishing. Hmm. Big and nasty from a distance. I have a rocket launcher. Not that big. Okay. I did manage to get my hands on a scoped assault rifle recently. Perfect. A, uh... Call it the vermin killer. <laughs> That's exactly what this little rat is. It's... As new. Still has a few blood stains on it, but uh, what can you do? How much? For you, you get the friends and family discount. Of course. Let's go for 3k. Let me see it first. Ah. Uh, and he opens up his. Uh, the back of his van and you notice just like these racks of firearms on each side of the interior of the van and a few crates uh and some of them are actually branded like militech arasaka one of them actually a uh cubic box has the iec symbol on it uh but he does pick up one of the rifles from the walls and hands it to you it is uh, silver and black with uh, a scope at the top. Uh, and it's an electronic scope, well, electronic, cyber scope, I should say, that can link um, via wi Wi-Fi or Bluetooth or whatever to uh, a cyber eye implant if you need to so that you can actually uh, change the magnifying... the uh, oof. the magnifying multiplier basically the zoom by just winking slowly take it out aim it up, look down the sights just at a wall or something not, not at anyone perfect I'll take it alright you uh, need armor piercing bullets with that hollow points just uh... Regular shells. Give me a little bit of both. Sure. And uh, he opens the IEC box and it's just... You know how like sometimes in cons you have like these boxes of dice like all just randomly in a 
bin and you can just like choose whatever you want. It's the same, but with bullets. <laughs> And he just it's a grab bag. Sh- yeah, just it's a grab, grab bag of bullets. He shoves his hand inside and just picks like a handful of bullets and he looks them over and he's like, well, you got probably about a half a dozen armor piercing. The rest is regular. Luck of the draw, I guess. Here you go. Oh, do you want that gift wrap? <laughs> just put it in the bag. I'll drop mine. Black. Knapsack, essentially. Mm-hmm. And I'll send it for 5,000. Keep the change. Oh, wow. It's payday. You, um... I mean, for that amount, you know what? You get a complimentary grenade. <laughs> oh, you know me so well. Try not to blow yourself up. I like to have return customers. Let's see. Might be your lucky day. Let's hope, uh... So that punk doesn't give you trouble. Doubt it. I shoulder the gun. Give him a little nod. Alright. He waves at you as another person comes out of the Forlorn Hope and uh, approaches him. He's like, I'll be seeing you, Reno. And he turns around and starts talking to the other guy who uh, is in the business of purchasing a small concealable firearm. I take no notice. Um, it's fine. Um, I... I'll start walking off in the direction of his apartment, uh, unless it's quite far. He lives on the north side of Night City in the better district you could walk there it would take you about two hours on foot and mm-hmm. it being the world of cyberpunk an armed person walking on the street wherever you are it doesn't that's matter that's true everyone's uh, packing something oh oh i'm sure um no i'll, I'll head a taxi and, and get in all right taxi asks you if you want to drive through the combat zone as a shortcut We've got time for the sightseeing route. Just go around. All right. The safe and quiet route. And uh, he drives you to Wrecker's Place. It's a very, very small bungalow. Like, it could almost pass off as a container. Like an industrial container more than a house. But it's his and he doesn't have to share it with anyone. Uh, is there a doorman at the there... fancy place? No, it's not that fancy. <laughs> not enough to have. Never know. Not enough to have staff. Um, but it's fancy enough that there's actually a patch of yellowed grass out front, like about two uh, by like two feet by two feet. Uh, interesting. Um, I'll kind of scan the windows, see if there's any lookers yeah, out. The curtains have been drawn, but through the cracks between the curtains, you might be able to see something. Can you roll perception? Yes, I can. You peek inside and notice that the house has been turned over ransacked it looks like someone went through all of his shit and threw everything on the floor um furniture is overturned uh his clothes some of them bloody are torn up and in a pile on the floor and you notice with a 16 there's a high power drill still connected to an outlet in the wall. Bloody work. Um, I'm assuming the uh, walking over to the drill doesn't have blood on it. Um, I, uh, with a 16? No, I think. What's, do you have any eye implants? I do. Um, so I can see in low light and, uh, 
It's okay. a cyber, it's a targeting cyber optic. So it goes through my marksmanship. And it also uh, enables you to see through low light. So you would mm -hmm. see inside, despite the absence of any lighting, uh, you would see that there are dark stains on the drill. And turning on your cyber eyes, you notice that the dark stains are shaped like fingers. And it is, in fact, dried blood. Hmm. Well, I guess I know he got the chip out. Um... I don't really have much high hopes for finding anything in here, um, but I'll look anyway. Um, I am going to be looking for likely not a note, but I'll keep an eye out for a, you know, slip of paper. I'm looking more for some kind of computer, maybe that he might have left something large, maybe a laptop, um, and then. any sign of an exit other than the door there is a door to the back in the back of the house um and as you walk around and try to peek through other uh, windows you notice that the back windows have been uh it's not just curtain someone actually taped cardboard from the inside to them to like block out completely Odd. Uh, like to like blocking blocking entrance to the door or blocking no light? blocking light through the window. Uh, the door itself is you you could probably open it. It's if you try the handle, it is locked. Uh, it is not a patio door though that uh, that stands at the back of the house. It is just a regular uh, door made out of like wood and steel and. Or whatever it is that a entrance door is made out of. Is there anything strange in this apartment that seems out of place for a flat? Do you enter it? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Okay. Sorry, I was thinking drill. I was thinking inside. So the drill was on the outside of the house. No, the drill was inside. You were peeking inside from the outside. Gotcha. Okay. Um, yes, I, I'll, I'll enter the house. Um, right. the... Uh, I'll give it a boot. I guess. I don't really want to enter head first just in case he set a trap, but... Sure, the doors are the locked, lock off. so you're gonna have to bash it in, bash it open. Um, you can make either a unarmed melee weapon attack, so a brawl attack, or mm -hmm. an athletics check. Um, I can do... I'll do... I'll do a brawl. I'll just see if we can... All right, punch it. All right. 18. You kick open the door. Shards, uh, splinters of wood just go flying inside the house. And you stand in the entryway. It is not trapped. You look around and you notice that the... Uh, there is a security camera, the light of which is still blinking, and it's pointed straight at the door. Hello, Rekka. Uh, I walk in. Like I said, clothes strewn about, furniture upturned, a bit of blood on the ground, the drill... And uh, now you see it. A computer chip. About yay big. Bent. With the beginning of a hole in it. Completely bloody. Is this a similar chip to what they have implanted in me as a tracker? Yeah, that would be the tracking chip. Uh, I'm going to pick it up and look over the camera and say, You can't hide for very long clever girl um i'll toss it to the side it's useless um any anything else he, he blocked out sunlight is there is there anything else um as you Seems go strange. about the house there's like three rooms in all mm -hmm. so eventually you end up in his bedroom and there's writing on the walls 
um, names and places. Sometimes the name of an event that happened, like a concert that happened recently. Um, other time, there's a riot that happened like about six months ago. Uh, the uh, downtown riots. Uh, that's written on a wall. And there are these lines drawn that connect them to each other. And it takes up about half of his bedroom. Like just covering the walls. And there's another security camera in the bedroom. The light is blinking. That's crazy. Any names? Any uh, large events I recognize that stand out? Um, yours stand out. It is circled. It stands by itself. Roughly a third of the way high on the wall. And What's it tied to? It's tied to nothing. But it's written under your name. Undecided. Little hint here. And you hear a voice come out. A scratchy voice from like a, a very poor quality speaker. It says, Reno. Reno, what are you doing in my bedroom? Oh, I think you and I both know. They sent you, didn't they? Of course they did. It's 20,000 in, in my bank account now. Oh, 15,000. You don't want to do this. You really don't. You're going to have to convince me better than that. <laughs> you don't know half of what IEC is doing. They're they messed look like up. I care. Oh, <sighs> You probably we will. Both know that. What's my name doing here? Because you're probably next. That's why I had to bail out. And I think you should bail out too. Who was before me? You? Is that why you're on the run? Yeah. You're a real Sherlock. <laughs> There's only you and I working as solos for them. And from what I've seen, they won't need us much longer. It was on that ship then. I haven't gotten through everything. Duh. Wait. Shit. We can't meet... You still have the tracker on you. I'm not about to give you any information through the cameras, because, well, it goes through the net. I, It could be traced back to me. I don't want that. I'll hear you out, but we'll have to figure out something, I guess. It's more interesting than my usual job. Uh, I am going to ignore him for a little bit because I do know that I have to get this tracker out if he wants to meet me, if I want to find him. Uh -huh. um, what I am going to do is make it sound like there's been a fight. Um, I'll be... Because I'm sure there's comms connected to me somehow. Um, I've got my phone. Who knows? They could have it tapped. Um, and they don't know that he's in the room. That he's not in the room, I mean. Uh -huh. um, and... I'm going to take a look around for five, five, ten minutes and then make it sound like um, I'm getting my ass kicked. All right. Make a... I know this is going to sound weird. <laughs> we'll make a play instrument check. Uh, that sounds fine. That's a zero. Let's see. <laughs> Fifteen. Just enough. You um, are very lucky. You make it sound convincing that you are getting your ass ended to you. Uh, and you even uh, pretend to fire and have your gun jam. So that, that way you don't have to expend any bullet or fire anything for real. And that he's just gaining the upper hand on you. Um, I figure you don't do that for like an hour. No. It takes a few minutes. Not long. Um, but I need to find a way to 
you know, long enough to get the chip out of my head. If I have to use his uh, messier version of the drill, I will. How many ranks in cybertech do you have? Um, what is that? Uh, is that a thing? I've got, I've got two. All right, so you would know basic. Um, with your knowledge of cybertech, you would know that uh, you can turn off the pain receptors in any cybernetic implants that you have at will. Mm -hmm. Meaning that even if you were to drill your own skull, you could decide to either be in so much pain or not feel anything at all. At all. Um, you remember where they implanted it because you have the scars to prove it. Mm -hmm. um, so you know where it is. You have a drill. Seeing how the other one was bented and almost drilled through, you're, you can deduce that he basically drilled inside his head, got to the chip, and then probably just used something to get inside the hole, or made it bigger, and then take it out. Uh, I'm gonna make it... I'm going to make it sound like I am in pain, like as if I couldn't turn them off and uh, drill it out, I guess. Yeah. Fuck it. <laughs> you drill in your own head. Can you make a cool check? Just roll your cool. Mm -hmm. See if you manage to remain cool while you're doing something that you never thought you would do to yourself. Where do I do? Uh, that? I don't think you can. Oh no, you can't. I can't really. Uh, roll concentration. Cool. I got five in it. So let's go with concentration means. instead. Okay. That would be a good moment to use concentration. You got it. Ten. It takes you a while. Um, you have to stop from time to time just because your hand is shaking so much because it's just there's a sort of surreal aspect to it, where like you know. Like, part of you knows that you should feel something as you're drilling, but since the pain receptors are off, you don't feel anything. You just feel like this vibration echoing through your skull and nothing else. Takes you a good 20 minutes to get through. But you manage to get the chip out. You're sick fuck, you know that? Uh, and I'm gonna... I'm gonna disconnect my comms link. Okay. Just in case. You never know. Cybernetics company, they could do anything. It's fine. <laughs> they can probably turn on and probably. off certain of your implants, like, remotely. But, oh, yeah. uh, as you do so, he recognizes, like, he knows some of your implants, just because of how, like, showy they are. The moment you turn off your comms, after you've drilled your brain out, mm -hmm. Um, the voice comes back on, on the speaker, and he says, Well, I didn't think you had it in you. You've got a lot more than that, Tiger. Right, Dish. Um. I don't be scared, it's just a gun. You know I'll kill you either way. That doesn't make me want to meet you. You know what I mean. Even if you don't tell me where you are, I'll find you. It's fine. This is easy for the both of us. At least I can hear you out that way. All right, Who but let's make it... It's more money for me in the end. Let's make it public. Deal. All right, there's a... There's a bar. The Forlorn Hope. It's just there. I'm surprised you even know the one. You never get out. No, but I hear it's a good joint for edge runners. That's not bad. We'll meet there. There'll be other people. If you try to shoot me, they probably will shoot back. Two hours. Sure. And you see, you notice the red light on the camera just fades out. Hmm. Oh, it's 
It gets more and more interesting. Um, I shall do my gun, give the room a little more once over just in case, and uh, I'll head out and start walking. Walking all the way back to the Forlorn Hope? Yeah, it's going to take a while. Um, in the meantime, I'll turn my comms back on as if I hadn't realized they'd been disabled. Uh, and send over a quick a quick ping to IEC. Strauss answers on uh, almost immediately. He says, we've noticed that some of your implants were down. What happened? <laughs> he knocked me out. It's an ambush. Where is he? Do I don't have... know. But I'm looking for him. This is less than ideal. Took out the tracker, too. He seems to have a nasty beef with you. Well, you keep hunting him down. And, uh... Make sure nobody finds the body. But bring me back the head. His head? It's a little, uh, allegorical, don't you think? I need something to play golf with. <laughs> Man after my own heart. I'll check in in a few hours. And turn it off again. Try not to get killed. <laughs> it takes you about two hours to get to the bar. Mm -hmm. And, uh... By the time you get there, it's fairly quiet. There's a band... Uh, rehearsing on stage. Uh, a few of the waitresses are walking around uh, cleaning up and uh, serving the handful of customers that are there. We are around midday, so not really the ideal time for a bar slash nightclub. Um, and in one of the private booths, the one in the corner, the one with the big cushioned seats that sit in a semicircle around a circular table uh, sits nervously Wrecker his dark black hair tied in a ponytail on the back of his head uh, he is wearing his like big bomber jacket over a tank top that uh, is marred with uh, sweat stains. Uh, you don't see what he's wearing below that since the table hides it all. Uh, but he has one hand on his hip, probably fingering a pistol or some sort of weapon. Uh, and the other is just tapping at the table. And you notice uh, his very prominent knuckles blacken on his like jutting out of his skin basically uh, compared to you where you have an actual cyber arm with the knuckles on it he just mm -hmm. had the knuckles implanted onto a regular arm uh, I'll I'll look him over um, I actually don't head over immediately I'll get drinks and bring him over sling one over to him sure. they uh, pull out my my pistols that I have and just kind of lay it on his thigh with my keeping, keeping, not giving it to him, just, you know, it's there. It's a threat. And I'm here now. Fashionably late. Yeah. You weren't followed. Not that I know of. They think you beat me. That's a plausible story. I would probably beat you. <laughs> no. No, no. I think I'd win. I. You you could probably get a few shots, but the moment I close in, I mean, come on. These babies. Right. Those babies. Uh, anyway, um. So, something to say about, uh. Yeah. Crazy talk on the wall. Well, it's not crazy writing. It's. You know how we've been in a drought with contracts lately. I don't know for you, but IEC hasn't contacted me in over six months. 
six months. They told me. They told me they'd given you work last month. No, I've been trying to make ends meet, just fighting like in in street fights and underground battles. They don't pay you enough. Not the salary. Pity. How much did they pay you? Like on the regular? I mean, I couldn't get more than three figures. Well. Not everyone can be me. <sighs> well, fuck it. Look. I went to the office after hours. And, uh... I dug around a bit. IC's been abducting people left and right. Abducting? Yeah. But they're targeting very specific individuals. Like who? People prone to cyber psychosis. Oh, like you. <laughs> I'm not prone to that shit. Oh, that's just a hunch. It's just a hunch. Anyway. They've been grabbing cybered up people off the streets. Mostly troublemakers. Squatters, punks, thugs. They never really went after the booster gangs. Just randos. And they've been keeping them secret in the basement. Did you know we have a secret basement? Yeah, there's a secret basement. They're pumping these people full of cyberware, driving them on the brink of cyberpsychosis. Because they have this plan, this army that they want to build. Borged up people just an inch away from blowing it. They want to use these people instead of us. They'll send them in, destroy, kill, murder, burn, what have you. Anything that they want to do. Collateral be damned. And then you know what? What'll happen? You have these crazies full of cyberware causing shit. The NCPD will react. Heck, the Psycho Squad will show up and they'll murder, they'll gun down. They'll disintegrate that person. So nothing can tie it back to IEC after, after that. What do you they have for an army? I don't know yet. But they have disposable people. What more? They've been abducting people. Have you seen them? I haven't managed to get to the sub-basement. I freaked out before, but... I got... I got the files. There's an entire project, and it's helmed by Strauss and another guy, a uh, doctor. I couldn't get his name. But, yeah, it's been going on for nigh a year now. Oh, and guess what? Just to make sure that things go their way, they've been slowly selling defective equipment to other factions in town. Like the NCPD, like the trauma teams, even the bureaucrats. They've been making sure that whoever might put a stop to a freaked out, cybered up psycho, they won't be able to get there in time. At least not long enough for IEC to get whatever it is that they need. We're useless. I heard about that, actually. Really? Just rumors. I thought you were in on it or something. I got scared for a second. Now they give me the best of the best. That won't last. They sent you to kill me. Then they'll send someone after you. They sent me to kill you because you stole their... Um, these documents? Yeah. Yeah, because someone needs to hear about it. It needs to go out to the public. I need to get World Sat on it. I need to get Night City News. I need to get someone. Well, why didn't you head there instead of meeting me? Seems a risky play. Because I have no one to watch my back. <laughs> and I thought, now that you know, you would see the... Logic 
and keep him with me going against IEC. To tell you the truth, I don't see the logic in it. You got these documents you mentioned? Show them to me. I can't. Got them all saved up in here. I destroyed the excuse. other backups. If I die, the documents go up in flame. Well, not in flame, but you know what I mean. And what exactly do you want me to do about it? Well, not Be your bodyguard would... to go to the news. Yeah. I've, I haven't been able to sleep for the past couple months. I'm pretty sure they've been spying on me, watching me. And now I, I have, have no doubt now. about that. They find all of us. I just don't see what good it's going to do if just walking into the news with no proof, no evidence. Didn't even go into the basement, so you haven't even seen these bodies personally. With a proper link, I can upload everything that I have up in here into a system. I'm not about to put it on the net because they'll just shut it down. Turning out to be a very interesting day, after all. Um, fine, I'll play with you a little game. Do you want to go to BBC Night News? I think Night City News would be our, would be our. Uh, no, wait. Maybe um, if we go to. Uh, No, we can't can't have it printed anywhere. It just people will just believe it's like another conspiracy theory. Yeah, <laughs> Night City News. Like this alien ones. Night City News. It's fine. You know where that is anyway, so Well you don't have a chips. They don't know where you are. They don't know where I am. Get a car. Alright. And, uh, you both exit the, uh, he, from his phone, calls in a cab. Uh, and, uh, after a few minutes, you both get out of the bar. He hops in the cab first. Do you also go in? Yeah, I'll go with him. Alright. I still don't trust him. He's sitting in the front seat, like, he's riding shotgun. No, 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 no. Back here. All right. And he sits in the back with you. I kind of cuddle up next to him, like, uh, as if we're dating, so the driver doesn't get too suspicious, but my pistol's still on his back. All right. You are being driven to Night City News. You eventually get to their... Um, offices like he even record doesn't really know like where exactly to go so he just asked for the address of their main office thinking that someone there will know what to do god you're incompetent it's the big one the one with the big head is over there oh, it's... yeah no but i don't know who to talk to well ask I've never done it's that. It's business. All right. And uh, he turns around and goes to say something, but your eye is attracted to something else beyond him. There is another car coming your way, speeding, about to T-bone the cab. Uh, I'll, I'll pull him. There's no way that we're going to get out of the car on time. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll pull him down and... Uh, as the car collides, I suppose. The car crashes into yours. The taxi goes spinning. It barrels over a few times and crashes against the sidewalk and the pavement. You are turned almost completely upside down. 
as you your ears are ringing, your vision is blurry, but you see feet walking around the taxi. Three pairs of them. Dress shoes, boots. Boots, combat boots. Um, they still don't know that I'm on his. Not necessarily on the side. They don't know that I'm playing double agent right now. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm keeping my pistol kind of disclosed. Um, but I'll. Yeah, are they on my side or on or just one running? is on your side and uh, basically there would be one on your side, one on Wrecker's side, and one uh. Still on the same side as Wrecker, but uh, closer to the driver. Uh, does Wrecker look alright? Is he is he awake? Uh, he's bleeding from the side of his head. Uh, his his eyes are fluttering. He's trying to remain conscious. Um, I'm still kind of dizzy, but I'll slide myself out of the window to look up at the uh, the man that's on my side, kind of fake a moan I guess as you get out the the one that was on your side looks surprised and he aims a shotgun at you pistol and shoot <laughs> make your <God>. marksmanship test <laughs> go right ahead do you aim for the head or you just shoot like center mass um I'm gonna I'm gonna aim I'm gonna aim. I'm down on the ground looking up to him. I'm gonna aim straight for his head, um, and I, I'll use. I'll use. Well, let's see how we roll first. Don't tell me how I do. All right. So, uh, if you want to aim for a headshot first. Okay. Sure. <laughs> we'll use that, and we'll say minus six. So okay. that's a fifteen because it's a minus six for um, uh, for headshotting. Uh, what are okay. you firing? Is it? It's your pistol. You said. It's my pistol. It's not the. It's not the uh, assault rifle. He is within 12 meters of you, the DV to hit is a 15, so you headshot him. Roll for damage. Um, how is that? Oh, heavy pistol, done. Yeah. 15. Ooh. <laughs> so many crits this game. So many crits, that's almost <laughs> max damage. Um, headshotting does, um, do, 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 do. I just need to check real quick because I know in The Witcher it does like three times the damage. Mm. Uh, the damage it gets through the defender's armor is doubled. Unfortunately, he is not wearing a helmet. You deal 30 points of damage. You blow his brains out in a shower Oops. of gore as he just... He was aiming and the body stays up still aiming at you for like a good moment before it crumbles over. Um, hopefully in this ensuing chaos, I am going to quickly not dive fully back in, but kind of lean back over. It's time to go. Um, As a you lean slap in, on the face. yeah, you hear fire, like shots being fired from the two other people. Shit. Uh, and I'll push myself out onto the other side of the car. Um, they're gonna roll to hit, though. Okay. Thirteen is not enough. They fire at you, but they hit the car. And the bullets ricochet off the car. Um, the other one that was next to the driver actually drags a barely conscious driver out of the car puts the shotgun against his uh, upper back and just fires. It's fine. Uh, is, is Rekka coming out after me or has he been uh, shot? He's trying to, and you notice as he's crawling mm -hmm. that his left leg mm -hmm. is bent the wrong way. Mm. And he's like, I'm coming! Ah! There's ah! no chance you can... Uh... Give a lot of info to me. Uh, do you have a... Fuck, what's the name of that implant? Do you have a... Um... <laughs> oh, come on, where's it? Interface plugs. 
Uh, good question. I had a lot of shit ripped out of my head. That is true. We'll say yes in this instance. Okay. Okay. So, yes, you do. Just like him. Nice. Uh, I give a little nod. And I'm hand ha holding out a hand to him. He takes his wrist and extends a cable from his wrist to you. Take it. Plug it in. Can I do another couple shots over the over the uh, over the, uh, uh, yeah. I'm not looking. I'm just yeah, blindly so firing. So on your sheet, actually, under actions, you can click on face down. Okay. And then roll for your attack roll, and it'll add the modifiers for like shooting okay. face down. Okay, that's face down. Okay. Yeah. Ten. Oh no, not not this face down. Uh, in oh. other modifiers. Oh, Sorry. I see. Yeah. Um. Okay. So you just click it to turn to make and it then turn my, green, and, and then, then my and then my attack my heavy pistol. Yeah. Okay. Got it. <laughs> Eleven. It's Not fine. enough. So you no, fire. You at least fire a like cover fire shot mm -hmm. type thing. Right. Um, but it's not enough to hit them. Um, they will instead the other uh soldier. Actually, the last two soldiers. One of them will still fire at you. The other one will bend down and put the shotgun through the window, the broken window. And basically shoot Riker up the ass. <laughs> okay. Oh. Ouch. Uh, what's there? I said plus five earlier, but I think they have more than that. He's got oh, he's plus, got the body armor and something else. Yeah, no, I just forgot about. Uh, I said I rolled a plus five earlier, but that was for their marksmanship. I forgot to put their reflex in. That makes more sense. Yeah, they hit. Oh, fuck. Um, he takes damage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but not a whole lot. He's not okay. severely wounded, uh, but the shot instead fired in his thigh. Okay. And uh, you can hear the impact. You, you're used to hearing bullets being fired at people and like penetrating people's skin uh, and hitting organs and everything. And it doesn't quite do that like squish sound. Um, so you know that something has prevented most of the damage. Right. And the other one firing at you. On a 21 would hit, unless mm -hmm. you have What's your reflex score? Um, it's an eight. Eight? You cannot dodge bullets. Okay. Um, uh, so that would be a hit on your body. Mm -hmm. And you would take 14 points of damage before armor. Okay. So what is your armor rating? Um, <laughs> uh, I have a... It's an 11. I think I have it written down as an 11. Yep. Yeah, so basically, you take 11 points less, so you only lose three hit points. Okay. I don't know where to put that at. Um, under actions. Oh, I see. Yeah, actions you have like three. a little table. Ah, with a, yeah, I like that. With okay. Dots that you can. And I took I took four. Three. Three. Okay. Yeah, 14 minus 11. Got it. Okay. So the bullets, just like the the, they're basically firing buckshot at you. Mm. Mm -hmm. So it's just like a bunch of pellets and some of them hit you on your shoulder, rip through your clothes, but don't really pierce through the uh, the light armor jack that you have. Um, okay. And he transfers the data as fast as he can um, before the other tug just gets fed up. The one that shot him in the ass and you can see him put the shotgun down grab a circular spherical object from his belt and pull a pin out of it and just roll it in the car. Fuck. Um Oh, there's no way for me to grab this kid out. Um Or is there? I don't know. I can try. I well, no. I mean, it's there in the car with with him. Okay, uh, uh, with me too, though. Um, yeah, because you basically bend down to get I'm back still, into the yeah, car. I'm still kind of like half yeah. in, half out. Um, can I just grab it and see if I can grab it and toss it back out at him? 
Sure. <laughs> um, I'll say... I don't have time to drag him out. I don't really have time to... I, I don't want to shoot a grenade, so... No, because that would have the same result. Right. Um, <laughs> I'd say... With your reflexes... Uh -huh. And the fact that he didn't actually throw the grenade, but just like lobbed it inside. Kind of, yeah. You could easily take it and throw it out. You'll need an athletics check to throw it out okay. the window to make sure because you're bent over. You don't have like the full range of motion. Uh, yeah. And I'll say it's a DC 15. Okay. Okay. 19. You throw the grenade out. It blows in back of... It explodes in the back of that uh, soldier whose body is just thrown against the taxi um, as he dies from the explosion in the shrapnel. Okay. The other uh, one, you can hear him run away. Can he run? Okay. Well, you've really cocked yourself now, haven't you? It's a chance. Um, I'm going to finish plugging in the interlink. All right. Um, and I am going to give him mm -hmm. the gun that I bought since he's he's prostrate and he might have a better angle on it. And I'm just gonna kind of turn around and keep an eye on everything that's going on, pistol in hand. People on the street have run away. Okay. You're not in a poor district. You're not in the combat zone. These mm -hmm. type of altercations are, though, a common occurrence. Mm -hmm. Not something that... Not that common. <laughs> yeah, not that common. Like, it, it's not something that you see every day. Um, right. And so ps people have fled. And uh, the other car, the black car, is still there um, a few yards away. Actually, like, two yards away from the taxi. Uh, its front has been busted by the shrapnel. There's flame coming out, burning through the fuel. Um, you're not an expert, but you have the feeling that this car will probably blow up sooner rather sure. than later. But um, otherwise, no other mysterious assassins around. Oh, and you see that guy running in the distance, like the other. Uh, and they're wearing heavy armor on their body. You can see them, like riot gear type thing. Do they have a helmet as well, I'm assuming? No helmet. I'm going to try and go for another headshot as he's running away then. With what? I have my pistol. It's... Okay. So the It may DV... not be... Well, would I know that it would hit that range or would I need a rifle? Oh, no, no, no. You could hit that range. Okay. Uh, you would need to roll a 25 or higher. Okay. Woo, um, okay. You can spend luck beforehand if you need to. Yes. But I'm since you're use... headshotting, remember to check headshot. And to one check face down. Okay. Um, I need face down as well, or no? No, no face down. Okay, no face down. Okay, uh, and I'm going to use that D6. Okay. Um, okay. Luck spin. Ooh, and I have two luck. I don't know what that means. You can spend... So it's a plus two to a check if you want. Fuck yeah, here's the last remaining. Let's do it. Um, okay. And attack. Ooh, maybe, 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 maybe. That's Five. a 16. 16 plus the 2 from the luck That's or whatever 18. it is. 18. And you I don't know what the DC was. No! <laughs> I can't math! <laughs> so, well, you fine. fire a shot with your pistol, but you are so far away. You're pretty sure you were aiming for the head, but the bullet just goes flying past him uh, right over his shoulder, actually. Uh, well, fuck. Too late now. Um, I'm just gonna have to keep waiting until the, the link is completed. It takes about a minute, which in this okay. circumstances is like a very long time. But mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the data but transfer it's... ends as Wrecker crawls out of the wreck of the car. He's swearing a lot, holding his broken leg. Oh, I'm sure. And he's like, shit, shit, I don't have the money to get that replaced. I don't think it matters anymore. Why? Well, 
<laughs> Don't know if they're ever going to stop chasing you. <sighs> Fuck, and I can't run. Well, got a couple extra bullets. And he looks at the gun you, you gave him and he's like, yeah, but I'm, I'm like a sitting duck right here. What am I? And he looks around and he's like, this. I meant for you. What? I'm not they gonna shoot head. myself. You know, they want, they, they actually want you, like your head. I thought you were on my side. Oh, well, I didn't say that, but I didn't say that I'm not. I didn't say I'm going to kill you. I said, I'm offering you some bullets, sir. Can't run. Can't really fight. And they will catch you. Eh, yeah, it's fine. Your decision. Make a persuasion check. Links completed, I hear in my head. Yeah. Um, where is the sad persuasion? A six, now. <laughs> no. He's like, I'm not. I'm fucking crawling out of here. I'm not doing that it's shit. Fine. Suit yourself. Am I. Do, once I get these files into my head, do I, do I have access to them? Like, can I. Yes, is it like a you memory? can access them. Yep. It's like, so you know how, like, the Google Glass in our world work, used to work? Because I don't mm -hmm. think Google Glasses exist anymore. But how you can browse <laughs> files and stuff, like, in your mm -hmm. vision, you right. can do the same through your eye, acting as a sort of overlay on the world. You can access the files and have them displayed. It's just, they are text heavy, so it's kind of weird because you can't really see the rest of the world around you as you're reading those files, but you could. Hmm. Mm, okay, this will depend. Okay, this interlink chip. Well, it was ripped out. Huh. I'm trying to decide what what what, what I would do. Um. I'm gonna look, I'll look through them. i look through them. I don't think they'll have a way for me to even know if I've seen it or not, but I'll look through and just kind of, just quickly browse. See if this kind of lines up with what he was telling me. Riker was right. They've actually been working not just with the doctor, but also from what you can see real quick, a bunch of therapists that are suggesting clients that are prone to cyberpsychosis that fit a certain profile and IEC has been given uh, paid out huge sums of money to these people in exchange for their patients whereabouts well now I know what you know Sorry, son, I've got to salvage this somehow. Uh, and I'm going to aim my pistol at him and shoot. <laughs> no, need, no need to roll. He's not in a stance. He's not in a stance. He can really dodge it. He just looks at you with pleading eyes as you shoot him square in the center of the forehead. And he falls limp on the street. Jeez, jeez. Shit. Um, okay. Um, yeah, uh, nobody's coming, coming back for me. Doesn't seem like it. You hear the sirens of the NCPD squad cars coming, though. Grab my gun, I head out. All right. Oh, his head, fuck. Um, fuck! Ah, okay, fuck, um, mm hmm. Closest alleyway by? Yeah, there's one. A few meters away. You could drag the body there before the cops arrive. Yeah, okay. If I've got time, I'll do it. I'll do it. You um, drag the body in an alleyway? Yeah. Um. 
his is it is it clearly like a like a bullet through his head? Well, I said that, but I mean it's up to you. Where did you <laughs> want to shoot anything, him? Anything, I suppose. Um, you could have shot him through the heart if you wanted to. That's true. Um, I you know what? She would have shot him through her head. She's she's a headshot kind of gal. Um, I'm gonna take my hat off and put it down on his down real low. Mm -hmm. Um. And, uh, kind of... There's probably nobody in the vicinity of that. Um... I'm gonna keep on walking. Um, I don't... I know the city fairly well, not like the back of my hand, but, um... I'm gonna try and get back to a busier part of town. Um... With him on my shoulder, like he's severely drunk. Mm -hmm. And if I can get there, then I'll hail a cab and see if I can... Sure. Convince... Convince him he's all right. <laughs> I mean, you have the money to pay I got someone hush -hush silence. Money. I yeah. got the hush hush money. So you can definitely hail a cab and uh, get back to IEC in a jiffy. Yeah. Okay. That's what I do. Now I feel really bad about it. <laughs> you head on over to Strauss's office. He's already standing by the time you arrive and claps. When I said I wanted the head, it didn't mean that I wanted the body with it, but at least this way we can dispose of it without the authorities knowing anything about it. Didn't know you'd be sending people to not kill me too, so... Didn't even look at your files. We did not send anyone. Didn't send anyone. Did Wrecker tell you if he spoke to anyone before? Not that I know of. Try to convince me you were out to get him and out to get me. They showed up. I shot the heads off. Shot him. Well. I'm glad this is all resolved. Did they look military? Did they have any kind of logo or anything? They didn't have any logo, but they looked like paramilitary, yeah. Paramilitary, okay. Huh, okay. Which means that they can, like, it, they could just be other edge runners. Like, yeah, other, like, it. hired thugs yeah. like me, essentially. Yep. Yeah, um, okay. But no logos, nothing. Okay. Um, he says, we thank you very much, Reno, for what you've done for IEC to cover up this mess right alas your services will no longer be required <laughs> i figured you're gonna kill me like you tried to kill him no we're just terminating your contract why would we try to kill you you haven't stolen anything from us and i trust that you haven't looked through the files mm, not after what he uh not after all the whole stories he told me what I take he... the implant link out and add it to. What did he tell you? Oh, uh, just nonsense. You should have seen his walls. And drugs, uh, likely. Strauss eyes you suspiciously, but waves the matter off and says, "As stipulated in your contract, IEC will." Um, take back <laughs> what is ours and you feel something press against your neck from behind you a needle and just like that you stumble forward and fall down you will go in and out drop in and out of consciousness as the operations are undergoing. There's this doctor standing over you. That you can remember, even years after. As they tear out your body piece by piece. Remove anything that can be removed that won't kill you outright. The high... I see his face. Do I have uh, to catch a, a name tag? He doesn't have a name tag. He's like okay. in scrubs mm -hmm. with a mask. But you okay. do see his great piercing eyes 
Okay. Um, and he speaks with a German accent. On the documents that I saw, yeah. was there a list of a doctor with a German sounding name? Uh, the name that you had for the doctor. I went through them real fast, so I might not have caught anything, but. Yeah, but you, um, you found the name uh, for the doctor. Let me just grab it for you. Uh, Cause Wrecker couldn't, but Doctor Schnitzer. <laughs> hey, yep. The one and only. And um, yeah, he rips part of you out. Sometimes it hurts, and you fall back unconscious, just through the pain. Uh, by the time you awaken, you are out on the street, like in an alleyway. They discarded you like They trash. just dumped me. Yeah, yeah, okay. Most of your weapons are gone, aside from your pistol. They apparently gave it to you. You feel a good couple of pounds lighter from all the tech that was ripped out of you. Even your cyber arm, the fancy one that you had, was replaced by just this, like, basic model. Enough to say that it's functional, mm. but it doesn't have the style, the look that you used to have. It's not as threatening now. And you feel a throbbing pain in your head. Just like this pulsating pain that just doesn't want to go away. And this pain is going to follow you for years to come. Mm -hmm. And that's where we're going to end your intro sequence. Ah! <laughs> oh my God. Jesus Christ. <laughs> that was Reno the solo. You will have moved on afterward, found a place to live at 2077 Pondsmith Avenue, mm -hmm. near the combat zone, where you will become the reluctant super. Pays bills. Of the building. Yep. And that, everyone, marks the end of our first session of this Cyberpunk Red campaign. Yay! That was awesome! Oh my Thank gosh! You. Woo! Um, We're gonna get in some dark places this game! <laughs> yes! My god, I love it! As much as Trince's intro was like bubbly light and Lighthearted and, and light bubbly and yeah. funny, like he wants a coffee, like... <laughs> yeah, with... <laughs> and then yours was very dark, like there's a, oh, a contrast... Oh, so dark! Yeah, oh. between the two. Um, Woo! That said... We are going to be back in two weeks for the other intro sequences. In two weeks' time, so in on November 29th, we will see the intro of the, the remaining three players. Zimenez, Mr. White, and Jinx. And then two weeks after, we are going to start off the game with all of our uh, cast here before we go i have a bunch of shit to say uh so we're gonna run over 11 o'clock but whatever first off we need to give away our last jumpstart kit so no need to sound off in chat um y'all are here i know who you are i've seen you bots around i will get the name of everyone here we now have how many people? Um, 16 people in all. So let's roll a d16 in roll 20 and get number eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Lurks, you're a bot. Shit, I forgot to take Nightbot out of it. Let's roll again. 12. 12 is other doc. 
Jim, you just won. Please send me a um, private message on uh, Twitch or Twitter, actually. Uh, same thing for All Right God, uh, if you want to send me the DM by Twitter. Um, I will get that to Talsorian, and uh, they will get your jumpstart kits on the way. I am Simon, at Wondering DM. Thank you everyone for coming. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you to all of you who hung out in chat. Thank you to the lurker who just watched. Thank you for all the follows, the donations, uh, the subs. There was an incredible amount of subs during the, the, the stream today. That was uh, fantastic. This was the first cyberpunk uh, stream. I was super nervous. Uh, I'm glad it turned out okay. Thank you all for watching. Thank you to those of you watching on YouTube, those that weren't able to make it to the live stream. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, it's always appreciated to know that uh, we also have fans over on the other platform. That said, our stream tonight was sponsored by Artalsorian. Thank you so much. By the way, you can thank Jay Gray at Talsorian. He is in chat right now. Um, this whole sponsorship and everything was thanks to him. So uh, a big thank you to Jay at uh, the Talsorian offices. Thank you so much for trusting me with all of this. Uh, we also have as sponsored uh, Mage and Press. Mage and Press, makers of fine D&D supplements such as Taverns and Tankards. Dark Matter, or the D&D in Space book, or the Book of Mimic. They also make classes, they make spells, they make monsters. Uh, they also have a Kickstarter starting soon for a horror game, a D&D 5e themed horror game. So keep your eye out for that. They will be at PAX Unplugged. I will be running games for them, actually, at PAX Unplugged. I will also be at PAX Unplugged. <laughs> you will, that's I believe, true. I believe our, like our, all, everybody except for Amina will be at PAX Unplugged. Uh, no, Jinx won't. There, there's oh, only you, oh, okay. me, and uh, Deirdre that are going to be Oh, okay. There. For some reason, I thought all this were... No, that's my no. other game. But there's... I've played in two games. Okay. <laughs> but we will be there. I will be there at PAX 2. By mm -hmm. the way, I will also have with me a sneak preview of my uh, campaign setting that I'm creating with friends. Age of Arcana. Temporary name. Uh, so if you want to look at it, if you want to see what it's like, we are streaming a campaign of Age of Arcana every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern over on twitch.tv slash roleplayers. So if you're interested and you want to see what the game is about, see what the world is about, you want to see it, you want to smell it, you want to touch it, you want to hear me talk about it for hours on end, uh, I will have that on me at PAX Unplugged. Um, also, uh, what else uh, did I have to say? Yes! The music for tonight's stream is from Sirenscape, the official cyberpunk track. Uh, you can get it on Sirenscape if you're interested. Uh, that's the music that will play through all of our streams for Cyberpunk Red um, going forward. So I hope you've appreciated the music. The uh, things will be listed in the credits as well, but I want to thank Carnero, uh, Carnero RPG, Lucas, who did all the amazing art that you see for the characters so on the good. overlay. Yep, this, uh, he is an amazing artist. You should all commission him, uh, but after he's done all the commissions for me. Uh, but he, he is amazing. He has a great turnaround, great style, uh, and he's uh, always open for like suggestion changes and everything uh, to the characters, and he's uh, not afraid to take on challenges. I also want to thank Three-Eyed Rat, uh, whom you've seen in chat today uh, during the stream. He's the one who actually made both the background behind me, which has the WorldSat logo, I think, or the Biotechnical logo, uh, but I'm hiding it with my chair and my face. Uh, he's also the one that made the intro sequence, what you saw uh, during the introduction, during the break. Uh, this is all him. Uh, he's a, a blender artist. If you want to see his work, you can follow him on Twitter. He posts his stuff from time to time. So uh, go ahead and uh, go give him a follow. I think that's it for tonight. Um, we won't raid anyone tonight, um, but normally we do raids, just not right now. My stuff isn't open and everything. I hope you've enjoyed the stream. And we will see you. Oh, yeah, right. Ooh, outros. I didn't do an outro for Prax. I am so sorry. Uh, but you can sound it off in chat, Prax, uh, where we can find you. Adelaide.
Where can we find you on the internet? Yeah, you can find me at O Adelaide. It's O H and then my name on Twitter and everywhere else. Got lots of games throughout the week. More coming up very soon. A whole new podcast in December, January area. I will be at Pax Unplugged. Happy to meet anybody. And uh, yeah, I'm super fucking hyped for this game. You have no idea. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Cool. Oh. And uh, I can be found, like I said, Mondays on Role Players. Tuesday, here we play Dark Matter at 8 p.m. Uh, Fridays, Cyberpunk, though it's an alternating Friday because right now you can also find me uh, the other Friday where I'm not DMing Cyberpunk over on Off the Table playing Randall, the uh, Captain Randall, the pirate in our prequel to Lady Blackbird, uh, Dark Side of the Blue. I play a very sad boy who's actually about to get laid next week. Hey! Yeah. Hey! <laughs> uh, because apparently people took pity of me or something. Um, um, you know, Petty Fox. Yeah, it's that's bad. it's better than nothing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, and on Saturday, like tomorrow, uh, you can tune in to watch Vampire the Masquerade, where our little vampire family will uh, take on whatever shit New York City throws at us. Uh, and um, Sunday, 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 I have a very special stream for y'all. Uh, starting at noon Eastern, we will be having here uh, Doug Cockle, the voice of Geralt of Rivia, Matt Mercer, the voice of way too many characters, uh, and he's apparently a DM for like another stream, I don't know what, um, but he does stuff on Twitch. And uh, Cody Pondsmith, the designer of the Witcher RPG, TTRPG, uh, will be GMing a special Witcher game for charity. Uh, where Matt will play as Dandelion, Doug will reprise his role as Geralt of Rivia, we're gonna have Kelly, um, the opera geek, Kelly Butler will play Triss Marigold, I will be there to play Zoltan Chive, uh, and we will play for Special Effects, a charity that helps children through video games uh, and such. We're gonna have a whole bunch of giveaways, books, medallions, pins, games, stuff, um, throughout the day, we're going to be playing from noon to 4 p.m. Eastern. You want to tune in. You want to see that. We've been talking about it, like, all week and even before. So, uh, very special stream that I'm very proud of. Uh, Sunday at noon. On that note, we're going to end this stream. And, uh, we will see you again in two weeks. Two weeks. Ciao, everyone.